while I was still living in London. It was a woman. It wasn't a full relationship, but it was a sexual relationship, I guess. Um, and I think it was probably about two, two or three years ago now. When we first were going to kiss, they just said, oh, is this okay, what I'm doing? And the question was like, I was like, what? It was just, a, it was, it took me aback a bit. Um, and I, to begin with, I found it not annoying, but I just thought it was like something that had never really happened to me in sexual situations for someone to keep asking you if something is okay. And I was like, what is this? I was like, it is fine. Like I'll say if it's not fine. But then I was like, I did say I got annoyed at it and I, I would like insist that they stop. But they were like, I am just going to keep doing this. This is like, you know, this is, and they, I, they, I think they even use the word consent, like quite a lot. Like, I, I am going to keep asking you, like, you can't just tell me to stop. This is something that's important to me. To have someone check in with you is like such, it actually, as it developed, became such an incredible thing and such a like sexy thing to like have, to have someone checking that you're okay and like checking if, they, if you want to change stuff. And then, you know, as you start to communicate more and they ask you more questions, I think you start to understand each other a lot more. And then you can start sort of sensing those things without having to ask questions. So, so they just sort of were able to sense sometimes when I, when I didn't feel like things or if I wanted something to stop or like what I liked and different things. I think I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, like a pleaser as a person. I like people to like like me. I want to do things well. So I think in situ in like sexual in situations like that kind of played out again. So I would always defer to what other people were doing and it was I was always kind of prioritizing what other people wanted and I was a giver. So I was constantly thinking about what other people were thinking in, in sexual situations. So I think I actually often didn't even think about how, what how I was feeling. So at the beginning I didn't even really have words to say how I was feeling. Um I think it actually was more obvious to her because she could, she got, she started to sense my, what was going on with my body and like how and how kind of she would sense things and tell me like she would say, you're not, I know I can sense something going on here. Like, what are you thinking? And I'd be like, I'm fine. Cause that's what I was used to doing. Like just sort of brushing away things that might not be comfortable um, to prioritize the other person. So I think, yeah, it got me sort of thinking about how I'm actually feeling it while something is happening so that so that you're able to communicate that because I think sometimes the feelings of not regret but the, the feelings of, of of like thinking about whether an interaction was consensual or how you were feeling sometimes happen afterwards and you look back at a thing and you think oh that wasn't good or it ends and you're like oh that was not good but I think yeah, having someone asking you makes you more attentive about what's actually happening at in the actual moment. Um, so you can stop it. There was many, many situations where I probably wasn't having like the best time. And now I probably would say, oh, let's stop. Or can we do something different? Or can we not do that? So I'm really, you know, I'm really grateful to that person. Because yeah, it really, I think it really sort of switched something in me. And it sort of set a standard for the sexual experience I had before and I, I mean that was kind of an extreme and I ha maybe haven't been with someone quite as attuned to that kind of thing I guess since I expected a lot more from my partners I also became much more open and communicative in, in sexual situations yeah but I think it was it took me it really took me quite a, a long while to to get used to but I think that I've now gone the other extreme where I probably overshare and um, and I think part, like, part, any partner that I have has to be comfortable with the fact that I'm going to be like asking what I want, telling people not to do things, but then also asking what they want, asking if things are okay. I just think that life is too short now to not do that, to have situations, to have sexual experiences which are not like that. It seems a shame that you can't be learned. You can't learn that kind of thing in a more sort of structured way that everybody learns. Like it's a shame that people have to learn from other, just from finding people from other partners that happen to be sort of more attuned to to it. I just think that we're doing something wrong 
in sex education sex was never sort of framed as this thing that you would do to have for, for pleasure like pleasure was never spoken about in in sex like consent like these things were just sort of things that didn't ever get spoken about it was more yeah what's biologically happening when people have sex people yeah this is how to stop having a baby or when you first start when you're learning about birds and the bees you know that sex is makes a baby and then so here's how to stop you know having a baby and you will get a sexually transmitted disease if you don't do this this and this and that was that was sort of it it wasn't like this can be something really that can make you feel really good (laughs) um especially if you do in these in these various ways like if you communicate with people and if you know that you have a clitoris but no, I, did, I didn't think I knew about that for a really long time. I also didn't, I think also in that whole time that I was having sex, I really just thought that I was not a person that had an orgasm ever. I mean, I did, but I just thought, oh, that's just, that's just something that happens in sex. Women just don't, just don't orgasm that much. And men, men do, that's just biology. Um, which is something that I've now learned is not true about myself or about women. <laughs> um, but I think that, I've been on such a journey with sex and my sexuality up until now that I really feel like I've like got it now. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, there's always there's always room to like develop, but I think I, it's like I feel like very excited now about the like sexual relationships I'm going to be in from now on, and like turning thirty, and I really feel like now I've hit my stride with it. And it's it seems it sounds so stupid, but it seems it's like really wasn't. I just didn't think I ever really like enjoyed it that much. I think I think I was just sort of not pretending, but I just really was just like I think when I first had sex, I was like it was just such an anticlimax for me, and I was like, well, maybe this is just it. Like maybe this is just what having sex is, and this is what I'm just going to do for the rest of my life. Um, and it got slightly better over time. Like it wasn't as awkward and as as the first time, but yeah, I didn't think I'd ever really yeah I just didn't really enjoy it for a long time whereas now I'm like wow it can be really like excellent (laughs) um and yeah I really enjoyed having like having it and I really look forward to having it in the future yeah and yeah I think I'm just I think it's exciting when you when you get to that